Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi. Hi. We had episodes this week. Finally. I was so scared. I was honestly, okay, I missed it horribly, but I was kind of looking forward to our backup plan. Oh, that's true. That so kind of fun. But we have decided to push our backup plan kind of to, to the, the Port final. Charles 411 for this week. Exactly. So today is Monday, February 3rd. I cannot believe we're in February. I know. So we're recording this on Sunday, so that was weird to say, but Megan's here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she was making sure that I knew my dates. I appreciate that, though. But So we're doing the recap of January 29th through 31st because we've had shows. Finally. Yes. Can't believe it's February. I feel like I say this every episode. I can't believe we're so far through the month. I can't believe it's February. I don't want it to be February because this is the month that I turn old. So. Four. Oh. oh I'm going to cry. So, yeah. I would have been content staying in January and just going straight to March. It's a shame that leap year's not before. For your birthday, because then you would have yes. had an extra day. Yep, exactly. you just missed it. If I was or born, if you on were leap born year, two years oh my late God. or two days later, yeah. Right. If I was born on leap year, I totally would be claiming. You'd be like five. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wasn't really actually doing math. There. You are so mathy, <laughs> and I was on that because I. Well, can you would do... know how old you are. <laughs> I can do forty I wasn't divided by thinking. four. <laughs> I just meant that you would be younger than. Yeah. I was throwing it out there. I wasn't actually. <laughs> <laughs> trying to compute but that makes sense i'll do the easy math because you always do the hard math so i'll pretend that i'm smart for one minute with my yep i'd be 10 and i would totally live that up to tell everyone nope i'm only 10 but yeah so i mean we had the week or we had from the 29th through the 31st so the 411 on thursday this thursday coming up is we're going to talk a lot about a lot about, about yes, what everybody did. What I, everyone did when General Hospital wasn't on. We're going to call it a world without General Hospital, you know, and just talk about, it's fun. It's fun. It's it some is. fun things. It probably doesn't sound that fun. It's just interesting to see. But we know what we're talking about. Yeah. You'll get it on Thursday yeah. and you'll be excited then too with us. Hopefully. So just make sure to listen on Thursday to the Port Charles 411 and get informed. There you go. So what do you want to get started with? You know what my favorite thing is this week. I don't know. My favorite thing. Oh, the thing that you (laughs) didn't even ask if I actually watched the show before sending me something about it? No. No? Okay. No, but that was a good, that was a good part about it. No, my favorite thing this week was that I was right a couple weeks ago when I said, Brando is still alive. And you're like, no, he's not. I didn't say no, he's he's not. And I was like, that's plain crazy. No, you said that he had to be alive because she was leaving him a message. And I said, that doesn't mean anything because I used to call and leave my grand messages. The way that message was, you knew he was alive. I felt like anyway, I didn't know that was him when he was saving. No, I had no idea. No. So we're keeping track this year of people that are coming back from the dead. Do we count him? Yeah. I okay. think we do, because we were told he was dead. Okay. But he had that picture of Gladys and Dev. hmm So that means that she's been in contact with him. So she did know that he was alive. Yeah, but I feel like Sonny and Carly are the main players, and okay. they honestly thought that he was dead. Well, then I'm going to add that to our list so, right now. You can make a little asterisk next to it. Some people knew, some people didn't. I feel like you'd be in the same boat with Nicholas, though. He came back from the dead, but people knew he true. was alive. True. So, true. Very true. I don't know what that fine line of dead, not dead is. That was crazy, though. It was crazy. With It was the worst time to have preemptions. Yes. I know. <laughs> you know I, I totally thought I missed a message. A uh, message. Missed a... Uh, Right. When when you started watching Wednesday, <laughs> and you thought that you were behind. One, my brain could not find that word. I'm sorry. Totally thought I missed an episode when it opened up with the shootout. And I was like, wait, wait, is this Wednesday, not Tuesday? What happened? Right. But no. Thankfully, very quickly, it said two, two. hours before yes. or whatever. So, yeah, thank goodness for that. For once, they actually clued us in yeah. of where we were at. So I wonder if they went back and added that afterwards because of the preemption. No. No? I think that they would have done it 
Anyway. Anyway, because hopefully, yeah, because you have to lead up to it. But... Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that was that made it even more exciting because you had no idea what you were walking into, and then it's a shootout. Yeah, and we haven't had one like that in in a three three of them. There was three, right? You know, but. You know how they did the shaky cam at the end of Friday's episode when Dev and Michael yes, were talking? I didn't like that. Okay. <laughs> I said that it would have been great during the shootout in the recovery. Yes. It, it didn't make sense for the short period of time that they did it. No. It would have made so much more sense with watching Joss go for her mm-hmm. journal and then all that. You know, right. it totally would have made sense from that vantage point to have shaky cam. Yep. But kind of crossing the living room. No, I did not. I was like, what are they doing? I don't like it. No. Yeah. It didn't make, it didn't go with it. And like you said, there was no purpose for it. Mm -hmm. It was just, it was kind of like they got a new toy. Let's try this effect out. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So I think Dustin is involved in the mob. Yes. Somewhere. I agree. Yes. I think that Brando might've been a third. So he's not whichever one was trying to shoot out. Okay. I think that he might be part of another one. And he just had knowledge of it? Yeah. But I think that that's why Dustin is into Lulu. Because he, she was daughter-in-law of Sunny. Mm, that would make sense. And has that inside knowledge yeah. and everything. I'm trying. I was convinced that because of the timing that Gladys is tipping people off somewhere. Oh, because she was really pushing for them to go to, to the, Brooklyn yeah. to get the testing done and like really pushing <gasps> that. What if she's the mob? Oh, what if she's the mob queen? <laughs> oh, that was, and I see I didn't go that far. Good job. No, you basically just did. You just didn't identify I, it. I thought that she just had some involvement, but I'm not understanding why she has involvement. Originally, I thought, but then she didn't know that Brando was there. Right, but that would make sense that Brando's working for a third party, because that was where my brain couldn't put it together. If they would have thought that Brando died in a mob war, okay. then I would have said that she was working for the other side to take Sunny down because somehow it was Sunny's fault that Brando got killed. Right. But she said Brando was killed in the war. Right. So I don't know why she'd be working for the other side. Maybe she's... She's the main shootout people's mob boss, but Brando is the third. Maybe he's with Dustin. And Maybe. they are the third. Remember how they used to have the five families? Yes. They're family number three. There you go. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Because she did, she knew obviously that he was alive, but she did honestly seem surprised to see him there. Right. I think that, like you said, Knew he was alive, but I mean, honestly, probably could have died at some point. Like, she just didn't have any contact with him. But how did he get that picture? Yeah, I think she had some contact with him because she was still calling his phone and he had that picture. I think she definitely... Calling the phone does not mean... I think it does. The way that message was left, it was like you knew someone was going to get it. I understand talking to the deceased because it makes you feel better or you want to hear their voice message or whatever. But just the way that she went in depth like that I feel like she knew he was gonna hear it I could be wrong but that was just the tone that she used I, I mean obviously that day I yeah. was like I think he's alive right. so I think that that's what that tone was so yeah she sent the picture to him I think because I don't know how else I he agree get it but I don't know maybe I'm wrong and she didn't have an involvement but I just felt like that timing was yeah yeah, yeah take Mike to Brooklyn and then all of a sudden there's a shootout in Brooklyn for Mike. Yes. Oh my gosh. But that waitress was so nice to him. Do you want to read your... Oh, it was so good. It's not mine. It's one of those snarks. You're fine. And I sent it to you because I I don't, I feel like you did say you had watched Mondays on Mondays. Was that Monday? Wednesday? I told you that it was going to be available. Okay, so... Because I didn't watch it until Thursday night. And like, I sent it to you Friday late. morning? Yeah. Okay. Like well, then, late Thursday night. Then we just have a connection and I knew. Okay. I'm going to we'll go, go with that, that one. <laughs> yeah, that's where, um, that's, yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> GH Snark, and this was by Amanda. I told you there's a couple different people. So this is the Amanda one that wrote it. And is that why you says, like them? No, because I didn't realize that until after okay. I started liking them. It's just a coincidence that Amanda's are 
funny geniuses when it comes to GH, I guess. Anyway, she wrote Bangs McMorris and Fiona Harlan, the detective who introduces herself every 90 seconds. This must be a spinoff show because they need backstories, love interests, updates, childhood flashbacks, all of it. I fell in insta-love with both these characters and started Googling how much it would cost to sell my imaginary waterfront property in Port Charles to move to imaginary Brooklyn where I could check in on their lives every day. I think I'll wait until Mayor, Mayor Collins finishes her renovations, though. Property values will go through the roof. In the meantime, maybe the writers will let them come visit. They can both show up in nine months with a sunny offspring since they both stood two feet away from him for an extended period of time without any protective gear. That's well within target distance of his baby making potion. And then in parentheses, it says, and there it is, Snarkies, the first Sunny's super sperm joke of 2020. Feels good to be back. Which now I want to go back and read all her old ones. I know. Because I just started following her. Exactly. So I don't know what the other ones are. But that was really funny. That was. But I really, so like talking about the waitress, I think that the waitress had the most authentic reaction. Like it was the yes. most real life. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. She was awesome. You and know, the way she talked to everyone, because right. that detective was totally trying to get her to say that Jason had done something wrong or whatever. And she was the way that I think you would be in real life. No, he saved my life. Like, what are you even getting at? See, I actually liked the detective because I thought... She knows who Sunny is, but she wasn't going in automatically assuming. Right. No, she wasn't like was Jordan. The, right. Yeah. No, right. she gave time, but you could still tell that's how she thought that the story was going right. to go. Jason did something wrong. And Fair enough. The waitress is like, no, what are you talking about? He saved my life, blah, blah, blah. Right. And that was awesome. And then she was like, listen, you might want to go back. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's so I liked her. I thought that she was interesting. Maybe we can have a new. Maybe they'll place one of the families in Brooklyn and have to have that interaction all the time. Mm. That would be fun. Okay. Let's do it. I do think I said that, um, I said, oh no, Chase is becoming overly Mm anti-Corinthos. He's always been very clear with his boundaries with Michael, but Michael has also always respected. Sasha put him in his place. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. I liked that. Like, okay. So she was obviously shaken. And somebody said... Somebody commented on one of our posts. Is anyone else thinking, Sasha, you knew he was a Corinthus when you met him? But at the same time, she's not from the area. So she wouldn't know. She knows Sonny is a mobster or whatever. But in her time, the year that she's been here. Nothing bad has happened. Nothing. Mm -mm. Nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Sasha. When you fall for someone, you don't think of all the bad stuff. You just concentrate on all the good stuff that's going on between the two of you mm-hmm. so until that kind of slaps you in the face you don't pay attention to it but i mean you would definitely think that in that amount of time something would have happened yes other than her getting poisoned and he works for elq not for Corinthus right. coffee if right. he was one of their employees i think it would be a little different but i feel like it's even easier to separate the two in your mind because mm-hmm. elq is a legit business over here and Corinthus Coffee is over here. And she commented on the fact that it was obvious that he's had to do that before. Yes. Which, yeah, but also, actually, it's funny because my husband and I were having this conversation on the way. Well, I was telling him on the way. It wasn't really a conversation. <laughs> um, so the roads were super slick this morning and very, very difficult to. We actually almost got stuck and we passed a couple people that did get stuck on our way to church. And. He made a noise, like he made a reaction once. And I said, you know what? I was like, I know that you're all goofy and like, because he really is. He's hardly ever serious. I said, but when it comes to things like that, I said, you are so cool headed and level, like just level headed. Mm -hmm. I was like, I am not scared that if tomorrow the world turns apocalyptic and zombies come after us. I was like, all my confidence will totally be in you. (laughs) But that's only because I've seen him. Right. He can handle like, those situations. Like that type of situation. Not, but I've seen him do other things. I've just never seen him <laughs> attack <Yeah>. zombies, <laughs> fight off zombies. But it's the same thing with, she should have recognized it from how quickly he negotiated for her with Lucy. Yes. That he's quick on his feet. He's very, he's, he's good at that. Yeah. Thinking. So, he's a big brother. I feel like that's one of those that. characteristics. That definitely play into your placement in the family. Yeah. You 
automatically take care of the younger ones if you're an older one. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in shootout circumstances for typical families, but still, if there's no, a but death in the family or yeah. a crisis, you, you try to distract the little ones and tend right. to the younger people. So, right. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we'll see how it goes. I didn't understand why Laura moved. Neither did I. Okay. At first I thought she was going to cover Jocelyn, but she didn't go over to Jocelyn. She went behind. Right. So she could have ducked down. Why? I don't understand. Because there were boxes. Yeah. That's where Michael and Sasha ducked down. Uh -huh. And she was right there with them, it appeared, when it started. Mm -hmm. So why did she stand up and move over? My first thought, and this might sound so crazy, is that I thought that there might have been like a fire alarm or something on... Oh. the wall like you know how oh, in public places genius. yeah so if she was going to pull the fire alarm okay. but i mean do they have fire alarms on outside things i don't know but again being down at the docks maybe because they're moving yeah things because they're warehouses and stuff yeah so it would make sense if there was one yeah okay so i'm not completely i dumb. like your thought process but okay. i have no idea <laughs> okay so when Carly was like freaking out on Jordan, she's like, you're the commissioner. Can't you get it here quicker? I was like, she's the commissioner, not a genie. She can't blink and get it here in five she seconds. Can't handle traffic. It's not how it works. No, it's like they go as fast as they can safely. Exactly. Without... Most of them are now equipped with the light changey thing. So they're getting here. I'm sure that's the technical name for it. <laughs> yes, the light changey thing. Light changey thing. thing. So they'll get here when they get here. Exactly. But then they never showed Laura the next days, like the next couple of days. Mm -mm. No, we have not seen her yet. Went away for Kevin to find out, though. Yes. It's like, what the heck? He was standing right behind mm -hmm. and no one bothered to tell him directly. That yeah. was not nice. Megan, did you watch any of this week yet? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. I was watching late at night and enjoying my okay. mom quiet time. With all I wanted to get her input, but if you haven't watched yet, she needs you can to just leave us it. a comment on Instagram. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she does follow us. She does. Don't you hate when you're listening to a great podcast and suddenly you're interrupted by an ad? I know. Thank goodness Stitcher lets us listen to our favorite podcasts like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, and many more ad-free for only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year. Go to stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Use promo code PEER54 for one month free on us. What else? I really liked Ava's conversation with Nicholas on the plane. Mm-hmm. Because he can learn a lot, a lot from her. Yes. A lot. I did like she and um, Nina's. Mm-hmm. They're going to be such good friends. They are. And I said, I was like, everyone needs a friend like Ava. Yes. You know, because she was not yep. letting Valentine. But Nina even told him. Like, Nina did do a good job of standing up for herself, finally, and saying... Look, I was part of this. I set you up. Are you not realizing this? Right. And he didn't care. But she needed, she needed the backup. Yeah. She definitely did. Because if it had just been her, I think she would have been able to be swayed. Or if the things with Jax hadn't happened right before. Mm -hmm. I loved when she said that he's the most arrogant man that she's ever met. And I'm thinking, you were married to Valentine, but I guess this goes back to Valentine's really the, just the hurt child inside. And right. So he's not necessarily arrogant. He's. He's just Valentine. He's this whole complex yeah. character. You could write your own book on him. Yes. I liked that Jax, she said about him being so arrogant and whatever, and then she said that he was cute, and all he <gasps> took from that was, so you think I'm cute? I'm thinking of Rudolph, <laughs> but he's like, I'm cute, I'm cute. She thinks I'm cute. <laughs> that was played really well, too. It was. Like that scene was very I wonder if that might have been ad-libbed. Maybe. Because he did take a little while to respond. Maybe. We want to know. Yeah. Now we need to ask. Yes. So they went to Brooklyn for that assessment. And I know that Mike was really shaken up. I think I would have had him do the assessment anyway. This was your last chance. And just for Sonny's own peace of mind. But I think that with how Mike responded, Sonny got his answer that his dad I hope is so, where he because is. Because if next week he starts talking about some other study, I'm going to be really annoyed. Maybe that was just, maybe that was Sonny's peace of mind. Okay. That if that's the way it works out, I'll accept that. But if we're back Mike on is. it next week, mm -mm. I mean, we'll see. But I, I mean, I agree. I'm really surprised that he didn't. Yeah, they were right there. Still take him, especially 
But I guess we don't know because if he took him there, it would have definitely been a no because it sounds like the study is geared towards preventing from further. Right. And if he took him there as he was. Yes. He was very much. I agree that they yeah, probably wouldn't have accepted regressed. him. That's the. There you go. Word I'm looking for. I just thought maybe Sonny needed to hear it. Mm -hmm. But if he'll accept the outcome of the shootout, then there you go. Let's hope so. Did not see Martin working for Valentine. No. What? Where? What? It? What is? Go where? I don't know. I don't know. That was a great sentence. I know. <laughs> but it made total sense. I got it. So did everybody else. But seriously, yeah. I mean, I mean, we know that Martin has worked with Valentine. Period. But not right. I'm not paying surprised. for her. Exactly. For him for to now. represent now. Right. I think What's that's the, the part that was confusing. You knew that each person independently worked with Martin, but the fact that they were all connected. Right. I don't know. What do what's the quarter the motive? What's have? The, yeah. What do the quarter mains have that Valentine wants? He's never really been big on ELQ and stuff. No, he's definitely never been. It's not like he's trying to get in there. Right. I don't know. Sasha's with Michael? Payback for Sasha? That's, That's really stretch. stressful. I know, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'll be excited to see where that goes. Because, I, yeah, I didn't see that one coming. Mm -mm. Finn? Yeah. Telling. He? Oh. Telling Nicholas is going to. That's the meanest yeah. we've seen him be. Which is good. He mm -hmm. needs to stand up for his baby mama. And his baby. Yes. I mean, I think that. If it was hate enough in and of herself, I don't think that conversation would have taken right, place. Right, right. No, it's about Violet. He's like, Violet needs her mom. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth finally got her slap in. She did. And it was a good slap. But I do think it's funny that she's so upset, being that she's tried to keep people from their children <laughs> and all of that, that she's so appalled that Nicholas would keep Hayden from Violet. We've talked about her yeah, hypocrisies, mm -hmm. though. I mean, it's just it's, funny when she's acting it out. Like, she's so angry yep. that she slaps him. How does someone else not, like, yell from a curtain over? But what about when you didn't tell so-and-so? <laughs> Remember when you thought that Aiden was yours? <laughs> Aiden, right? Yes. Yeah. Aiden was supposed to be Nicholas's. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Exactly. Remember that whole thing? <laughs> but, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Just, it was a good week. I don't know. It's a good three days. So, if you didn't get a chance... It looks like there's still a lot of people that aren't aware that it's back, even though General Hospital social media posted it. We've retweeted and posted the articles on Instagram. I think it's kind of all over the place because it seems like Canada and other places could access what we saw Wednesday and Thursday last week. So they had already watched it because I had seen comments about things Laura that getting were happening shot. this week. Yeah. And was like because someone stops. commented on one of our things and oh. i said we didn't see that yet and she actually deleted it oh that was nice yeah Thanks. i forget who it was but thank you yes that was sweet and so yeah so some i people think that they saw then. wednesdays but they didn't see because they got the 21st and then that was the last new episode that they got so that would have been our wednesday oh see i thought they got wednesday thursday but either way they had seen ahead of us and then there's still people out there saying no, it's not being shown like on their app and all that stuff. So someone did say that it worked great on the app on Wednesday, but then I guess after that, it really did. It was, yeah, it was, I don't know. So, I mean, but yeah, Hulu had it. That's where we got ours. Right. So. And I know, I mean, so some people were watching it West Coast on the broadcast network. Yes. If you're East Coast, it's not broadcast network again yet. It's Hulu, ABC.com, ABC app. Yep. So. That's our little PSA for you. There Passing you along info. Didn't really have anything else though. No, it was it was all good storyline. But now we need to get to next week to see mm -hmm. what it all means. That was what that was. What'd you do to your foot? Nope, you can't get there. Okay. <laughs> so I think it's time. For do, do, do. Reality check. All right, reality check. 
I don't remember who goes when. I know we said we're going to keep track. Can we do Megan? Know. Megan, what happened to your foot? <clears throat> no, I have to tell Because I just saw it. No, I have to tell the Megan story for her, and then she can comment after if you would like, because she's not <laughs> going to hit the point that all moms out there are going to appreciate. Okay. Do you want to go first? You went first last week, but do you want to go first, being that it's... I just asked a question? That... Sure. Okay. I'll go first. So, typical week of Emily has bowling, and Megan wants to do this, and Madeline has that, and blah, 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 blah. Tuesday... Megan always gets Madeline off the bus. We live three houses down from the bus stop. Right. So that's her big sister duty. Go get Madeline. So she goes out to get Madeline and she comes back in with Madeline and she's like, ow, ow, ow. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? She was going to step off of the porch. Okay. Now, there's only two steps right, to get right. on our porch. It's not like, like the back porch that someone's falling off of. Two steps to get on our porch. She goes to step up on the porch, loses her balance falls backwards and hurts her leg and every mom in the world is going well maybe she shouldn't be looking at her cell phone did not have her cell phone on her she was eating a cookie and was distracted by the cookie what kind of cookie (laughs) just a chocolate chip cookie homemade or store-bought homemade (laughs) oh that's nice though she made them herself so it's not looking that nice but She's distracted by her own deliciousness. Distracted by a cookie so much that she fell backwards. It was off, backwards. Well, down, sideways. I don't know. But anyways, so yeah, she comes in. She has this big scrape on her knee. It instantly Real starts to bruise. And then her opposite foot, she's holding. It hurts. Blah, blah, blah. And so I said to her, put some ice on it. Sit down. Relax. You know, you, you hurt yourself. You'll be fine or whatever. So she goes to school the next day and whines at the school nurse. And I love school nurses. I know they're only looking out for our best interests, but sometimes they can push things a little far. So I start getting text messages. The school nurse says that I broke my growth plate in my foot. I need to go to the doctor right now. Well, Emily has a match. so I can't take you to the doctor until after Emily's match is over. So at seven o'clock at night, we're at Children's Express getting x-rays done. And no, thank God, she did not break anything. I it's just a say, really how bad can you tell sprain. You broke your growth plate just by <clears> looking at I it. I guess from where she was pointing that the pain was that that was what they thought. But luckily, it is not broken. That's and a really definitive she, diagnosis, though. She has that air cast on it. They said it's going to hurt for well, the next five right. days or so. So and it's to, a good thing you didn't make volleyball, right? Did you listen to last week's episode? Uh, oh, um, I said I'm really sorry that you didn't make the volleyball team. But so, now it's really okay it, because you it, wouldn't it, have been able to play anyway. Exactly. So. Exactly. So that's distracted by a cookie. That's this week's reality check for me. And then for the other kids, just because I like to try to talk about the girls. What about equally. you? Mm, I yeah. noticed that. You talk about... I do. I always... Well, I mean, that's me in general. I talk about the kids, not me. I... What is well, your reality check, Amanda? No. I didn't have a reality check. We, together, which we hardly ever do anything outside of this together, Shannon and I went to a night at the races. Yay! And that was fun. Fun family time. That was a lot of fun. My mom, my sister, my brother and his girlfriend, you and your hubby, mm-hmm. it was a good night. Yep. And we're going to do it again next weekend. Exactly. I didn't win anything last this weekend, though, so I hope that the one that we go to for your friend, I win all kind of money, because it's depressing yeah. if you don't even win. Like, even one th- like I won $12? <clears throat> Well, actually, I would have won one. I like to know. I like to yell at my sister. There's your reality check. Yeah, there's my Hi, reality Val. check. I like to yell at my sister. Years ago, there was a song that came out. It was a really good song. And my sister convinced me, because I was the baby of the family, convinced me I needed to buy this tape. That's how long ago we're talking. Okay. Buy this tape, because it was going to be a great tape, because this one song was amazing. So I spent my own hard-earned $13 on this tape. And that was the only good song on the tape. So I tell her. What was it? Silk. Okay. It was who the artist was. Yes. And so I tell her all the time that she still owes me $12.99 for this tape that I bought. Is that because it was a waste of money? No, it was um, Freak Me. (laughs) What the song was called. It's kind of inappropriate, actually. But I tell her all the time. Let me. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I'm like, I knew it was one of those. So. (laughs) Um, <laughs> so I tell her all the time she owes me twelve ninety nine. So we're at nine at the races, and she's going up to buy her horse, and she's going to the same window that I would have to go to. So I give her the money, and I ask her to please buy me horse number ten. 
And she comes back and hands me number nine because she thought I said buy the same horse that she was buying and what horse won, but number 10 yeah. and I would have got 12 bucks. So now I'm going to add that to the $12.99 for the cassette and that was in debt big time over here. So big time, big time. Might have to remortgage your house or something. So there, that's my, I, but me personally, I didn't have anything fun and exciting. If I ever do, you guys will hear because I'll be excited to have something in my own life outside of them. But no, it's all about the kids. And Madeline's is that she lost another tooth this week. Aww. So that she's very visited us. Hey. Yes. That's funny. So there you go. Well, I guess so, on the night at the races, I was actually thinking about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. We had a great conversation about the fact that we're both planning on using the same funeral home. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, what a reality check. I'm like, this is where we are in life. We are both like, you're going to go there. I'm going to go there. Yay. We can be buddies. Funeral home well, buddies. We have to like, die together and we can have a joint funeral. Hey. Maybe that'd be cheaper. I'll talk to James. Thank you. That's a good idea. I'm like, so if I can arrange a BOGO. <laughs> I don't know that he's going to go for that. No, that when we had our little reunion with everyone that we used to work with, and after a few drinks, I start asking him about green burial. <laughs> there you I'm go. like, okay, this is where we are. Yep. Like, I just want to ask about green burial. And like, you can have those kind of conversations. Right, but, right. Non, yeah. I mean, they're specific to the topic, but non-specific about people. Right. Sure. I don't want to say other than that. Not much. <laughs> Let me look at my calendar. Other than our talks about dying together. We installed the keyless pad. Yes, that was very so exciting. So I will not get locked out again. That was so funny. And that's exciting. Everyone's loving it. It actually kind of makes me sad because now I know I'll never have that fun lockout story again. We can always hope that the battery dies, you know. Well, Madeline's getting too big to throw in a window anyway. So if you're going to need her services, it better happen soon. Okay. I will work on that. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so I guess that's, that's it. really it. So... I guess another quick <clears throat> reality check is that our episode about Studio City got a lot of feedback, like a lot of great yes, feedback. You know, a lot of the so actors good. liked it that and was shared so it fun. and commented on it. So that was, I love pretending like they're our best friends and they're retweeting yes. us because they love us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but then you found something really cool. Yes. This was on MichaelFairmanTV.com and it says, Studio City scores 12 nominations for Indie Series Awards. Soap Notables compete in major categories. And I'm not going to read you like the whole article because it just goes no, on but that's and on. But amazing. 12, I mean, that's... I don't know how many there are, <clears> but <throat> um, 12 is a lot of anything. The 11th Annual Indie Series Awards nominations in 28 categories were revealed this week. That's almost half. Yes. Sean Kanan, Studio, C Studio City led the drama nominations with 12, along with the series Pause Raws, which I have not watched, so I know nothing about that. Yeah. But yeah, 12 Yay! out of 28, that's awesome. Congratulations. And I think that it was the perfect substitute for the days that we did not have. Yes. General Hospital. Yeah, so. it definitely got you your mini fix to get through the days. Exactly. But yeah, so join us on Thursday when we talk more about what everyone did when General Hospital was not on. Have a good week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.